Hey guys, my name is Mike White. I'm a former submarine officer. I was on board the USS West Virginia. Uh, it's an Ohio-class submarine out of Kings Bay, Georgia. And I commissioned through OCS and the Navy's NUPOC program. So I wanted to do a little video of the NUPOC program, talk about who's eligible for it, what are the specifics, and then just my overview of the pros and cons of, of this program. Just a disclaimer, all these views are my own. Uh, is not affiliated with the Navy at all, and things may have changed. I entered the new POC program in 2014. Uh, correction, it was 2015, so about seven years ago. Most of this advice, I believe, should be accurate still, but just verify with the recruiter and read anything before you sign it. All right, guys. Uh, so first off, to be eligible, there's kind of two situations. So you're either in college and you'll be graduating within two and a half years, or you already have your college degree and uh, you'll be less than 29 or younger than 29 when you're actually commissioned into the Navy and you can get a waiver up to 31, I believe. So once you get accepted into the Navy's new POC program, your time in active duty starts. This is helpful for two, two ways. Uh, if you wanna do the Navy as a career, these, this time in the NUPOC program counts towards retirement. Uh, so you could be at retirement age within like two years earlier of your peers uh, that commissioned either through the Academy or ROTC. Additionally, the Navy pay scale changes with your time in service and your NUPOC time counts as time in service. So as an officer, you'll be getting paid more um, over your career than you would as a Naval Academy graduate or ROTC. Additionally, um, they have some pretty rigorous academic requirements. A lot of it depends on the school you're going to. So they have a, a ranking, a tier system. Uh, you have to ask the recruiter for the exact tiers and how they distinguish them. I, I don't even know. But they look at that and what your degree's in and then your GPA. So there are cases where even history majors can get into the NUPOC program. You'll just have to take two calculus courses and two physics courses as like the bare minimum requirement. This is off memory, but I believe when I was going through, they wanted you to have at least a 3.3 GPA. And then once you were accepted in the program, maintain above a 3.0. But if you don't have a great GPA, I'd still explore your options. I or if you're right on the, the borderline there, uh, they may make some exceptions for candidates they think that they think will do well in the program. So the specifics of the program, the first thing you should do is go find a recruiter. A lot of times on college campuses, there'll be a recruiter on site or very near and tell them you're interested about the program. They can set you up for a tour of a submarine and a ship. So. The NUPOC program is not only for people that want to go submarines, but it's also for aircraft carriers because they are nuclear powered. And then they have slots open for instructors at nuclear power school in Charleston, South Carolina, as well as if you want to work for naval reactors, you could also go through the NUPOC program. For naval reactors and instructors, they have a higher standard for your academic performance. So just know that if, if that's what you're interested in, uh, you gotta start hitting the books hard and early. Uh, but either way, you're gonna be sent on a tour. I'm, I gotta go to San Diego. I know some people did go to Kings Bay on the East Coast, but uh, from my understanding, the normal trip is they'll send you to San Diego on the Navy's dime to show you what a nuclear powered submarine looks like the living quarters uh, and the whole forward end of the boat as well as the lifestyle aboard a navy ship and for i i mean it was a great experience uh, for a college kid <clears throat> getting to go to san diego fly out there uh, we stayed in old town san diego just soak up the sun and see all what the Navy does and I had no idea and it was really eye-opening and it got me even more interested in the program. So 
If you have any interest at all, I recommend at least starting your application and talking to the people that are actually current officers and seeing the boats, seeing the ships to see if it may be a good fit for you. So after San Diego, they'll ask you, are you still interested? And if you are, the next step will be technical interviews. So these will be over the phone. You'll have, I believe, two to three questions and uh, they're basic calculus and physics questions. Big thing to note here is that they want to see how you solve problems, not necessarily that you can get to the right answer. They wanna see your thought process, which is very hard in a phone interview, uh, but you need to display that somehow. So when I did mine, I make sure I had my notepad out, was telling them what I was writing down, uh, what equations I was thinking would, would be useful, my assumptions, and then went from there. So if you do well on these technical interviews, you can go to Washington, D.C. You'll get invited to Washington, D.C. to interview with Naval Reactors. Now this is the your big time interview. Uh, you'll be there with about maybe 20 people on average, and you'll have two to three interviews during the day, and then a five minute interview with the four star admiral. Uh, these again are the same thing. They're gonna be very calculus physics based and they wanna see your thought process. So the big thing here is just write things down, tell them what your assumptions are and tell them what you think you need, need in order to, to solve the problem. And if you do this and if you can speak coherently and intelligently uh, that's going to increase your chances, even if you don't get the right answer. So ideally, you only do two interviews. The third interview is usually for people that are kind of on the edge. So the interview with the Admiral was made infamous with Admiral Rickover, the father of the nuclear Navy. Uh, legend was, so he had a chair that had three legs that were the same height, and the fourth was, was much shorter just to make people uncomfortable when they were being interviewed. And he'll ask them, he would ask some off the wall questions, have people submit things after the interview and really kind of just test you as a person under stress and see how you, you answer things. Now, fast forward to today's Navy, it's not as extreme as Admiral Rickover, but they, Admiral still wants to see how you answer things. Uh, make sure that you're taking ownership for any mistakes you made or things you did poorly and kind of self-reflect why that was and what you learned from it. So if you have bad grades on your on your sheet there, if you have made a C in a class, it's very likely he's going to ask you why that was. It's also just way more of a personal interview. Uh, for mine, he asked me where I went to, where I was going to school and why I chose the University of Texas. Uh, so that took up most of, the, most of the time. And luckily for me, I didn't have any deliverables afterwards, but I had friends that, uh, one guy was really into music and the Admiral asked him to send in a, cop, a piece of his music after the interview. Uh, one person really liked a book and the Admiral liked that author as well. So he wanted to see her write a essay about the book and overview and, and send it in. So these are things that can happen. They're normal. It doesn't mean that you did bad. Uh, that's just the process. So if you get asked to send something in after your interview, that's great. Most likely you've made it and you just need to follow through on that piece. So don't get stressed out, be yourself, answer intelligently, take ownership for any mistakes and you should be good to go. So you completed your interviews at Naval Reactors and they put everyone in a room together to wait the results. You will find out that day if you are part of the Nuclear Navy or not. And that day, if you accept, you will enlist as an E6 and you could possibly even be an E7 if you recommended someone else into the program. And you're not an E6, you're getting paid an E6. So don't think 
that you have earned the respect of a first class petty officer and definitely not of a U.S. Navy chief. So take your benefits, take your pay and start getting ready for your career as a nuclear submarine officer. And so what does that entail? That entails making sure you keep a 3.0 GPA. That is your job. Also, make sure you can pass a Navy physical readiness test. So that's a mile and a half run, it's a plank, and it's push-ups. So stay in shape, make good grades, and you're gonna be getting paid as an E6 in the United States Navy and get basic housing allowance. Um, so this is awesome. You're just going to school, you don't have to shave. Uh, check in with your recruiter every month and you can even take internship, in, internships in the summer. Uh, just let your recruiter know what the plan is and be open with the company as well because they may not want to give you an internship if they realize you're going into the Navy right after. So just be straightforward with everyone and uh, there may be opportunities to make even more money in the summer and gain some experience. Um, and another thing to know, if during this time where you're going to college, getting paid, and you're struggling, uh, tell your recruiter. So better early than late if you're having any academic concerns. Uh, maybe you need to drop a class and take it over the summer. Or <clears throat> there's other resources that they can help you with. But don't surprise your recruiter with failing a class. Like it, once you're having they're invested in you as well. So they'll give you all the resources they can and support in order to make the grades you need. So that pretty much is the overview of the NUPOC program, believe it or not. Now, if you are dead set on wanting to be a submarine officer or work on nuclear, work in nuclear power in the Navy and nothing else, then the NUPOC program is great for you. If you're on the fence, if you don't know if you want to be a pilot, if you want to be in special warfare, or if the SWO life is for you, you're really unsure, the Naval Academy might be best. Uh, because there, you, you get to put in preferences, but you're not always guaranteed what you want. Um, and they'll be paying from your school from day one, so that may be a better option. Same with ROTC. ROTC has options where they'll start paying your school right when you get there. Um, not, in, not in all cases, but in some cases. And you have more flexibility about where you wanna go, but you may not get submarines and then you still have to serve because you made that commitment with them paying for your college. Whereas in the NUPOC program, if you're dead set on submarines, and say you don't pass your interviews, you don't have to go in the Navy. Now, you could apply again, or you could go to some other field, but you no longer have the obligation to the Navy. That comes with you're not getting paid by the Navy as well, so there's trade-offs. Um, so ultimately, if you're for sure you want to go into naval nuclear power and there's nothing else you wanna do, I think the new POC program is the best option. All right, guys, uh, leave a comment below, hit the like button, and I'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks.